I'm here in San Antonio, Texas on the media first drive event for the Ford F-150 Lightning. And I veered off course a little bit to take this guy to an Electrify America DC Fast Charge Station and record a little DC fast charging session. Now the vehicle is at 61% state of charge because this wasn't a planned event. I didn't have the opportunity to drain the battery that much lower. So we're gonna charge it from 61% up to about 80%. But got some good news for you. I've been pestering Ford to let me do a full DC fast charge recording of the vehicle, and they're just not allowing that just yet. Really soon, in a, you know, a matter of a week or two, there'll be vehicles available to do that, but here on the first drive event, they're accommodating so many different journalists, it's, it's hard to give me special privilege to drain it down to zero and do a full DC fast charge recording. So what they did was, they mapped out the theoretical DC fast charging curves for both the standard range battery pack and extended range battery pack. Now, what do I mean by theoretical charging curve? Well, every time you DC fast charge your vehicle, you won't get the exact same results. There's a lot of things that affect the speed of the charging, temperature being the most important thing, the state of charge when you pull in, even the equipment, the charging equipment, sometimes limits how much power you get. So the theoretical charging curve is under perfect conditions, this is what the vehicle is capable of doing. Now Ford is giving me the theoretical charging curves that we're gonna analyze here today in this video. I'm the first person they've ever given it to and actually I'm pretty excited to dive into it analyze it we'll see just how good of a DC fast charging electric vehicle the Ford F-150 Lightning is but first I'm going to do this quick recording here 61% to 80% and then we'll see if my results match that section of the charging curve that Ford gives us and then we'll also create a couple of charts based on the theoretical charging curve but first up, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. One more thing I wanna mention while we're here is that the F-150 Lightning comes standard with plug-in charge technology. And if you link your vehicle to your Ford app, all you have to do is plug it in and it will connect to the charging station and seamlessly begin charging. Now that, of course, is if the charging station has plug-in charge technology. Currently in the US, only the Electrify America network is plug-in charge capable. And speaking of Electrify America, the Ford F-150 Lightning comes with 250 kilowatt hour of free charging on the Electrify America charging network. So your first 250 kilowatt hour is complimentary. And then from then on, your app will automatically charge you. You have to link your credit card in your app so that way you can automatically uh, be billed. And you have to do that even to activate the free charging sessions. You need a credit card in that app to get the account open and you need the account in order to use plug and charge. So before we jump into the charge recording, I wanna make a correction from what I said in the intro. I had planned on charging from 61% to 80%. However, the Lightning charged a little bit quicker than I was expecting. I had a little extra time, so I let it continue charging till 90%. So we're gonna take a look at my recording from 61% to 90%. We're then going to plot it out on a chart, that 29% charging session, and then I'm gonna take a look at the data that Ford gave me. I've plotted that out to create a hypothetical charging curve. Now, I have to mention that they gave me the data in a format that I'm not really used to seeing. It was charging power over state of charge and time. So it kind of took the normal charging curve that I get and pulled it out. So I had to take a look at it and kind of estimate what state of charge it was at at a certain time and then plot out the charging power. I spent some time on this, so I think I nailed it. I think what you're gonna see on my chart here is very close to the true hypothetical charging curve that the extended range battery pack for the F-150 Lightning will have. Now we're gonna be able to prove this pretty quickly because my F-150 Lightning that I ordered is due to come to the dealership in two or three weeks. So I'll very quickly be able to do full charge recordings and we'll see how close I got. But, you know, I took a real hard look at this data. I spent some time analyzing it and I'm pretty sure what you're gonna see here 
is the true charging curve for the F-150 Lightning with extended range battery pack. The standard range battery pack is gonna have a different charging curve. It does accept the same amount of peak power, 150 kilowatt, as the extended range version does, but it doesn't hold it quite as long. Ford actually showed me briefly both charging curves. They didn't give me them at the event. Uh, they had both of them there, and I was the only person that they showed them to. Uh, Darren Palmer, who's the VP of electric vehicles for all of Ford, came over to me and said, look, you know, you do all these great charge recordings, and I want you to be the first person to see this. So that was really quite an honor, and I really appreciate that Ford actually followed up after the event and sent me the data for the charging curve. I believe that I'm the only person they sent it to, which is pretty cool. So we're going to take a look at that next. I'm going to plot out my charging session on the chart. Then we're gonna look at the hypothetical charging curve that Ford gave me. Then we're gonna overlay my charging session on that chart to see how close I came to what Ford says we should see when you charge the F-150 Lightning extended range battery pack on a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. So let's jump over to the recording that I did now and start the analysis. The first thing I want to note is that plug and charge worked perfectly. As you can see, the charging session recognized the vehicle as a Mustang Mach E, Ford's other plug and charge enabled electric vehicle. I suppose Ford hadn't updated the software to tell Electrify America that it's actually a Lightning just yet, as they're likely using the same plug and charge code as they do for the Mustang Mach E. As soon as the charging session starts, the Lightning is immediately pulling 142 kilowatt but quickly lowers to 117 kilowatt and holds that for a while. After 10 minutes of charging, we're at 76% state of charge and the charging power has climbed back up to 121 kilowatt. After 12 minutes, we reach 80% state of charge and that's when the charging rate falls off a cliff and drops from 121 kilowatt down to 59 kilowatt and it holds that until a 85% state of charge. The charging power then slowly creeps down until 88% state of charge when there's another sudden drop to 39 kilowatt and holds that until 90% state of charge when there's another drop down to 30 kilowatt. Okay, so we added 29% state of charge going from 61% state of charge to 90% state of charge in 30 minutes and the charging station dispensed 41.2 kilowatt hour. 29 percent of the Lightning's 131 kilowatt hour battery pack would be 38 kilowatt hour. So the remaining 3.2 kilowatt hour was lost due to charging inefficiencies. So now let's take a quick look at how that charging session looks when I plot it out on my charging power chart. Then I'm going to overlay the full charging curve that I plotted out from the data Ford gave me. But first I want to remind everyone that, you know, if you do get an F-150 Lightning, you're probably not going to be DC fast charging it all that much. Most charging gets done at home or at your business, and that's really the most convenient place to recharge any electric vehicle. You plug it in when you come home at night, it's fully charged by the morning or charged up to the limit that you set it at. You don't always charge your electric vehicle to 100%. Most of the time you usually charge it to 80 or 85% for daily charging, but I go into that in detail in some of my other videos. But home charging, as I said, is the most convenient, the easiest place, and it's also the least expensive place to charge your F-150 Lightning. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the video, but for now let's take a look at the charts and see how well the Lightning did. Okay, so let's take a look at that session on our charging power chart. You can see here when we plug in, the lightning is drawing 142 kilowatt. That's really more than it should be drawing at 61% state of charge. And you'll see that when we compare this session to the hypothetical charging curve. From that point, the charging rate slowly drops down until it reaches 117 kilowatt, but then slowly begins to creep back up to 121 kilowatt at 80% state of charge before taking the plunge to 59 kilowatt. And from that point on, the charge rate rapidly declines to 30 kilowatt when the vehicle's at 90% state of charge. I know I've said it earlier in the video, but I wanna remind everyone this is an estimate. 
It's my interpretation of the charge curve based on the charging power data that Ford gave me. It didn't include hard numbers. It was just lines on a graph without a lot of context. However, I've done enough charging analysis to understand how charging curves work, and I was able to plot out what I believe to be the charging curve for the 131 kilowatt hour extended range battery pack on the F-150 Lightning. So plugging in, the vehicle will pull close to 150 kilowatt immediately. And as the battery voltage increases, so will the charging rate. The Lightning is actually gonna pull more than Ford's published max charging rate of 150 kilowatt, and it will likely increase to somewhere around 160 kilowatt at about the 35% state of charge point. And that's when it's gonna slowly decrease and level off at a little under 120 kilowatt over about 10 minutes of charging. It will then hold at about 120 kilowatt, increasing slightly as the battery voltage continues to rise until about 75% state of charge when the charging rate drops to about 100 kilowatt. It'll hold that until 80% state of charge when there is a huge drop off in charging power all the way down to about 59 to 60 kilowatt. It will then gradually lower the charge rate until the 85% state of charge point when the Lightning is taking in 40 kilowatt and hold that until 90% state of charge when there's another sudden drop to about 30 kilowatt. Now what happens after 90% state of charge is still a bit of a question to me because the information that Ford provided seemed to indicate the vehicle will hold a charge rate of over 25 kilowatt until about 95% state of charge. But judging from how Ford treats the Mustang Mach-E's charge rate once it's over 90%, I'm still not convinced it's gonna be that good. I'm thinking the charge curve might actually look a little more like this, but we're gonna find out in a couple of weeks when I get my own personal lightning. Now let's take a look at my 61% to 90% charging session overlaid on top of the estimated charging curve. There's definitely a lot of similarity and I got the whole 70% to 90% nearly spot on, except for how in my session, the vehicle held 120 kilowatt until 80%. I believe that's gonna to drop to about 100 kilowatt at 75% state of charge. When I initially plug in, I'm pulling a lot more power than what the full curve estimates but that's normal. The Lightning is simply pulling more power because the battery and components aren't too hot from what would have been 40 minutes of charging if we plugged in at 0% state of charge. I don't believe you'll see 142 kilowatt. I don't believe you'll see 142 kilowatt at 64% state of charge as I did if you plug in at zero and we're doing a full charging session. But we'll soon see. I could be wrong and the Lightning may hold the higher charge rate from all the way over at this point. Next up, we're gonna talk about how long it takes to charge the Lightning on a DC fast charger. Now, most Lightning owners are going to primarily charge their electric vehicles at home, but there are gonna be times when you need to use a DC fast charger if you're going on long distances. Home charging, however, is by far the most convenient and least expensive way to recharge your electric vehicle, whatever electric vehicle it is. You plug in when you come home at night. By the morning, you've got a fully charged vehicle, no range anxiety. You can even pre-warm, precondition the vehicle so it's either warm for you in the winter or cool for you in the summer when you leave and you have a full battery. So most people are gonna probably do 90 plus percent of their charging at home and they're gonna need to install home charging equipment. And when you do, please use a licensed and insured qualified electrician to install all of your home charging equipment. It may seem like it's an easy thing to install, but licensed electricians have best practices. They know the codes. They know things that you probably don't know. And when you're charging electric vehicles, you're pulling a lot of current continuously every day for many hours. It's not the type of appliance you wanna take a chance on and wire yourself. So always hire a qualified licensed electrician and somebody that has experience with electric vehicle charging equipment. And that's why I've partnered with Qmerit, America's leading installation service provider for electric vehicle charging equipment, home energy storage, and other electrification technologies. See how Qmerit is making the EV and energy transition easy for home and business owners by following the link in the description of this video. So Ford tells us the extended range battery pack lightning will charge from 
to 80% in 41 minutes. That means the charging station is gonna to have to deliver about 94 kilowatt hour in that time period when you add in the average charging losses. And that's an average charging rate of 138 kilowatt. So after I made the graph, I added the 138 kilowatt average line across the 15 to 80% section to see if it reinforced or disproved the curve that I had laid out. And it's actually pretty much spot on. Okay, so we know that 15% to 80% is gonna be 41 minutes, but how about the time for the rest of the full charging curve? I'm gonna estimate the zero to 15% is gonna take about nine minutes. Now, that means zero to 80% will be 50 minutes. Okay, but how about after 80%? I think it's gonna take another 50 minutes to go from 80% to 100%. And that's based on how Ford's been conservative with the Mustang Mach-E and how long it takes to charge once it reaches about 90% state of charge. Now that would give us a full zero to 100% charge time of about an hour and 40 minutes. Now typically, we advise people don't stay at a DC fast charger once the vehicle's at 80 or 85%, maybe 90%. It's just not worth it because the charging slows down so much, you really just are wasting your time. However, the lightning's different. This is an electric pickup truck. People are gonna to be towing, people are gonna to be hauling. They might be traveling long distances and there's gonna be times when they need every ounce of energy they can. So here's what Ford has to do. In my charging session, it took me 17 minutes to go from 80% to 90%. So if you add that 17 minutes on top to the 50 minutes that we're predicting it's gonna to take to go from zero to 80%, that's an hour and seven minutes to go from dead to 90% state of charge. Now we know over 90% state of charge, it's gonna charge slowly. There's not a lot Ford can do about that, that's physics. But I'm really gonna focus on zero to 90%. Right now it's at about an hour and seven minutes. I need to see Ford get that down to about 50 minutes. Shave about 17 minutes off of that because the customers aren't gonna plug in at 0% state of charge. Let's say they run the battery down to five or 6% state of charge. Now it's gonna be a little bit less. It's gonna take about 45 minutes. That's what I wanna see. When somebody pulls into a DC fast charger at a very low state of charge, under 10%, I wanna see them at 90% state of charge in somewhere around 40 to 42 minutes. I think if they can do that, that's workable. Then people can really use this to tow long distances, can to, to work this truck on hundreds of miles if needed. Now I know getting charging stations that are pull through so that you can actually plug in with a trailer is a totally different situation that's out of Ford's control. Hopefully Electrify America and the other networks are working on that to improve that so pickup trucks that are towing will be able to plug in without having to unhook the trailer first and get into the stall or block the entire parking lot. But that's what I'd like to see Ford do. This is pretty good. I'm actually very happy with what I see with Ford. This is workable, but they can improve it and they promise that they will. They really just need to shave off about 15 minutes from the zero to 90% state of charge point and this truck is workable and the charge rate is just fine. Well, that's a wrap for our Ford F-150 Lightning DC fast charge analysis video. I hope you found it entertaining and I hope we answered some of the questions that you had about how well the F-150 Lightning is going to DC fast charge. Now, I'm gonna be getting my own personal F-150 Lightning in a few weeks, so there's gonna be a lot of content, charging and other, here on the channel, so stay tuned for that. The last thing I want to point out is I know we've had some people say Ford should have used an 800 or 900 volt battery system on the F-150 Lightning and there are advantages to that but as you can see in the video what they've done with the charging curve isn't bad. Now it's not world class by no means but I did get directly from Ford's VP of Electric Vehicles Darren Palmer that they are going to continually improve the charging craft. And Ford already did that for the Mustang Mach-E. Less than a year after releasing the vehicle, they issued an over-the-air update that shortened the charging time. It improved the charging curve. And Ford promises they're gonna continuously work on the charging capabilities of the F-150 Lightning to improve it incrementally. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit from it. Please, if you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. And thanks for watching.